Hi, before we settle down and do another watercolour, I haven't any idea what I'm going to do. I thought I'd show you some early pictures that I painted uh, mostly in oils some years ago. I've painted hundreds since, but I've just I kept these as just to demonstrate. That that's a picture, a photograph. They're not online unfortunately, these are all pre-computer for me. Um, these are paintings I did at the end of my sister's holiday house garden in St. Petersburg, Florida. So it's around that coast, the uh, the Gulf Coast. Um, so that one, this one here, if you can see, uh, I'll have to, if I hold them like that, they're behind um, polythene as well. Another one there. I'll just show you the on one side. Do I spend all down? There's another Florida one. These pictures are still in Florida. Another one. Oh, let's just move the camera down a bit. I, in 2000, 1999, 2000, 2001, I did lots of Venice paintings for, for the Webster Gallery in Oxshot. It's no longer there, sadly. Um, that was a uh, these were Seago copies, well, at least based on Seagos. Uh, but all of these have, 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 have sold in, in galleries of one form or another. That's another, based on a Seago Norfolk scene. This one, let's show you that one. Uh, there we go. Typical Seago. This one here was from a photograph I took of my wife sitting by the, the uh, Estron River in Provence. I've still got this painting, I might put it in, in up for sale uh, shortly, but I might hang on to it. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful area and there was a lot of work in this, this one, a lot of uh, sorting out. But these are all, all in oil, Venice, I've still got that one. This one, well that's all the long gone. Venice. Venice. This one here sideways on. I, that was in a calendar I think. My cousin's got that one. Another Florida one. Uh, that was based on a seago, that seascape. This one was a, a I, I did a, a sort of a Monet on an Edward Wesson. Let's uh, come up a bit. On an Edward Wesson idea. Pease Lake in uh, Surrey Hills, but I completely changed it and I, I put all this colour in, but I don't know where that one is, I, I don't know if it's ever sold, I'd love to have it back. I spent a lot of time doing all this, all these colours, this mosaic of, of lovely warm colours. This was, uh, I don't know if it's a, uh, based on a, a western, I've still got this one, you can see it on pops against my wall. Um, I changed it all, cha I changed it around a bit. We do know these boats. I'm not very skilled in painting them because living in land, you don't get much of a chance. But um, my brother-in-law has a house near here. This is West Mersey. Oh, the, the picture was taken from, well, based on a painting from Brightling Sea. But I love the skies and the way the sky goes into the sea. Probably brought the reflection down too far, but anyway. I uh, won't we really pass through those. More Venice, this one here, uh, I don't know where that one was. This one here is um, from uh, the uh, Estron River again, looking up. They're very mountainous in this part of Provence. Uh, friends had a, a friend's cousin has a house there in a village called Requestron Grass, and we had a, a lovely week there. Uh, misbehaving, had a great time with friends, but this beautiful surrounding. I still paint these pictures from from the photographs we took. Another one of the Estron River. Looking at this part of it, it's, it really is like that. It's pretty, it's pretty close to the original. Another one looking out of one of the windows. This one was looking out of one of the windows of the 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 house. Very lovely looking out over this, the lower village. And the Estron River is down here somewhere with these plains of, of distant hills and mountains. Just wonderful. The village is parked on top. 
and have a quick look over at these, these ones here, Venice. These were based on Antoine Bouvard type uh, Venice paints. You change them around a bit and do your own. Can you see how you can't see that? Let's bring that over to there. Um, well anyway, more Venice. I was very busy doing Venice. We don't copy exactly. You, you change you change things around. You make your own painting from what is there. And this guy's uh, grand uh, uh, offspring, his his grand grand uh, children, are still painting like him or in the style of or, or ripping him off. So nothing's new, is it really? These are the same Rochestron in photographs. It's a bit overexposed on there. The light or I think the flash on the camera bounced off the uh, shiny surface. It's another one, I won't show you that. It's a village perched on, on the rocks. Uh, I don't know where these, these were. If you can see them. Uh, more Venice. Another one of, oh that's where we've seen that one. There's my, my, my wife sitting there. Uh, another one. I don't know for the life of me where that one is, I don't know if it's sold or what. Another one, Seagal, nothing is Seagal, looking down the, the Estron River as it's flowing into Nice, or one way or the other. But the but the well, the surrounding countryside was really just, just like this, with these these lovely villages perched in the in the uh, into the, the rocks, clinging to the mountainsides. Uh, village perche perched villages. Um, that one I made up. This one, my son's got that one. Uh, I'll pull that over. If you can see that, I put the figure in there. It's a very lovely, warm, hot summer, summery picture. I love it, and I've done a Monet with it. Loads and loads of different colours, just a web of colour. The, 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 the guy that, that influenced me quite a lot in those days was, and still does, whenever I see his pictures, I wish I could afford to buy one. Is Arthur Madison. Um, look out for him. He's he's about my age now, and and uh, whenever I see his his paintings, I just love them. But he, but he's gone from sort of fine pointillist style to quite uh, rich, thick in pasto slurs and slurries, but lovely, lovely, lovely painting. Another one here. That's uh, you see that. That's another one of the river, the Estron River. Let's go and show some more. Um, I've seen that one. A little more Venice. Uh, Venice. Well, sea goes. Now this, this one, I've lost that one. That 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 was in a gallery that really got wrecked by three brothers up in London, and it was a knife painting. Well, it wasn't done with a brush, it was done with a knife. It's my favourite style of, of painting oil. Um, but I, I, I copied it, I think, from a French postcard. But, I did, but there again, see, I, I did my thing with it. it. The view exists, I just didn't take the photograph. Uh, flowers, I don't really do flowers. I made these, these two up, but they, they don't exist, they never did exist in reality. But they're the Monet style, Arthur Madison style. I had a lot of fun doing them, but they took a long time, days to do all this amount of paint because there's so much colour, colour on colour on colour. And as it dries, you can put more and more colour on it, drag it across, dry brush, and you get this web of colour. Uh, that's a seago. Uh, this is one I made up, that sold straight away in an exhibition at London Bridge. Um, I called it Carl Shorten Park Sentinels. I took a photograph of it. But I completely changed it into what I would call a work of art, rather than a slavish copy of something. It looks very much like Monet. Indeed, it, it, it was based on a Monet style. But the view is mine. It doesn't exist other than in my head or my photograph. So there we are. That's, that's uh, 20 or 30 or more uh, paintings that I've done. I've got a couple of these, these folders. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Now, I'll, I'll have to move the camera back to where we can try to demonstrate. I've got a clue what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here like Alan Owen and wait for some inspiration. 
and just start painting. Right, okay. <coughs> well, we all like trees and skies, so let's do trees and skies. Um, I had my brother-in-law stay last night and his wife sadly died a couple of years ago, very sadly. And she was a budding artist, she, she always wanted to be a painter, watercolour painter. And he gave me this brush of hers, this, uh, this squirrel mop, um, it's quite a big one, Winsor & Newton. I've got a, I've got a, a Dale Rowney version, but this has got twice as much hair in it. I've never, I've never tried it. So, um, let's uh, put, put in some sort of sky. So I'm going to use this brush to do that. And I, I don't know where it's going to go, what's going to happen, but I'll put some, put some ultramarine blue in there. It's got a lot of water in the brush, so let's just... Whoa. I don't think it's meant for painting, I think it's just meant for, for washing in. But anyway, we'll, we'll uh, see what we can do with it. Let's have a bit of alizarin in there. Alizarin mixed with ultramarine does tend to kill the, the brilliance, the coldness of the blue. Right, let's just bring that down to there. Now I'll uh, clean the brush and I'll put in a bit of bit of light clean right red. Not much different from the hake is it? Uh, but other than the it holds an inordinate amount of water. Uh, right. Light red. Just warm up some, some bits of cloud. And now a bit of, bit of sienna, mixed in with that bit of red. So let's just bring that across here. Okay, low horizon. <coughs> and into that I'll put in a, a light red and blue mix. Well, I've got too much water on the palette now. Just take that off. Right. So there's there's my my cloud colour. So we just put that in. It's all dry lighter than it is, but we've got a bit of perspective in the clouds here. Now who knows what that's going to do. Right, okay, let's uh, clean the brush out. Done our sky very, very quickly. That's all I'm going to use that for. Squeeze out the, uh, the water and leave it in a nice shape. It's good to put the brush in your mouth, provided it's clean. And just bring all the hairs together into a nice, sharp, Sharp edge. And don't leave it flat. Nicely. I've got a, one of these. I wish I could get another one. It's just a oops, just a, a piece of round wood, about three inches, four inches diameter, with lots of, of holes drilled in it. And I've got lots of my little brushes here, most of them worn out, and most of them old riggers. Um, brushes don't last very long with the oil painting. I'll just, I'll just reclip this. Now I'm going to put in some... Well, I'll see. I'll see. Uh, I'm missing a clip now. Uh, there it is. I'll, I'll dry that off and I'll stop putting in some trees. This is the uh, Buckingford 140 pound rough paper. That's the, this number 10 sable mix, or well, mix with a bit of sable. Um, I always try to remember to keep my brushes in a point before I put them back in those little plastic sh things. Um, right, let's um, put in some, some trees here, reminiscent of the one I painted with the suffolk. 
So yellow, burnt umber, paints great. Oh, also, I, I, I think I prefer burnt sienna to the to the burnt umber, but you can use whatever you like. What we seem to have got away from is making uh, greens out of uh, blue and blue and yellow. Lovely, lovely uh, colours. All right, let's just put in some using the size of the brush. And if the light's coming from over here, we'll put in some some lighter yellows. So much water on the brush. Just a clump of trees in there. And I can uh, I can add darker notes to this. This is going to be a study in trees. Right, that's a good start, isn't it? But what we're going to do is a landscape, yeah? I will put some uh, some branches and trunks in, in here. Right, let's come in with some uh, much darker green now. A load of paints grey, load of yellow and a load of burnt sienna. So you get a nice sort of drab drab colour, just lifting the edge of the brush, just taking it up and down. Now we go over the hill. And to uh, change the colour a little bit. But there's a lot of burnt, burnt sienna now. To change the uh, tone of this. And then we can do some, some blue in there to show distance. Just go back with some warmer greens in here. Oh, I'll use some burnt umber in there. A bit of plain square mixed in, so just try not to make them all the same. Okay, uh, now we'll, we'll uh, balance this with a, a much larger tree. Uh, I'm making this up as I'm going along. So we want nice, nice and rich. Okay, so we'll have this a bigger, bigger tree. And sort of in silhouette. Probably put two trees in there. I do like using a big palette like this. It, I've got paint boxes, and they're, they're great for for uh, outdoor work, for sketching, because that's what they are sketch sketch box. Right? Oh, I have come down here with that bit of a some yellow. This is where we want the rich, rich dark. Some warm. Yeah, that seems to be. Well, see that that is receding. That's going backwards in the painting. Good pattern. 
and I don't want to do that. I'll tell you a big thing to watch out for. When, you, when you're when doing trees, or anything comes to that, you, you, do, you do one, you've, you think that's very good, then you do another one, and then you do another one, all good trees, but then you look at them afterwards and you think they're all the same. And you didn't realise at the time. Just uh, get that right up there. Some branches coming out to there. Oh, okay, okay. No, I don't know that was. Right, now let's just put in some, some uh, shadowy type of. Uh, Down there, and then we've got into the uh, some yellow, yellows, some brighter, brighter greens. Yeah. Cloud shadow, and then we've got here a bit of sienna, a bit of uh, both siennas, I think. In. I'm going to put a darker sort of a tone under here, under this, under this shadow, and from those trees. So I'll just show this here as the landscape disappears into a little bit of a valley there. To the light, so lemon yellow, nice. Do some dry brush in this as well, it dries a bit. Right, I'll be doing some rigor, rigor work in there. Let's uh, get my rigger and stop putting in some of the detail in, the tree, in some of these trees. And for that I'm going to use a stronger mix of that green, the burnt sienna and lemon yellow. But on the darker side, a warm. Uh, let's uh, oh, need some water in there. Just very loose. Don't forget that the the, plant, the trunks are holding up a great weight of uh, leaves and twigs and all sorts. So as you come down, they need to be thicker. So just get them in nicely. I'm not going to do too much. Just, I've spent a lot of time just showing you the, around my one of my picture albums. So any record I've got now, of course, all my pictures are on external hard drives, all my watercolours anyway, because I haven't done many. I've done one oil as a demonstration for a group this year. It's all been watercolour. Another one over on that right. Just, just heavier one in here. Just to block that corner, and then we we can do more lighter sienna and mix with the grey. Just, just a few in there. So we're losing the detail, it's uh, going more blue now, and yeah, but then we're going to nothing, no detail. Okay. She seems to have lost one of them. My internet's gone down, I've been down since. Uh, 
nine o'clock this morning and they've only expected to be back on until nine or nine o'clock tonight there's a bit off in there. Until I can't even upload this if it's even worth uploading. Right, okay. Uh, now we've got to do some work in this one now. Just for measure of the day in the country. Or half hour with your imagination. Uh, right, let's take us into some nice rich colour here. My stand is my stand's dark. Oh, it's got good, good, good one in there. See, you can get a really thick line with a rigger. Amazing brush. Mm. Be careful where you go. Yeah. I'm not holding the rigger sort of fiercely with this grip, I'm sort of quite loose. I'll put some more harder foliage in there. Let's just get that in there. I'll come up into the canopy. It's always a bit easier painting into the light because the face is silhouette. Leave lots of spaces in between these branches to indicate foliage being before some coming out the top. Not too many, don't they carry away. Me. Let's go back with a, a bit of, uh, I'll use a thinner, my number six, with a dark. Dark green. Oh, let's just, it's all in silhouette. We'll just indicate another where this uh, <coughs> bit of ground goes, the shape of it. We just, I'm just hitting and missing. And just all these greens, so as I said, some coming up here. You do this how you like. I'm not, I, I, this is just how I've evolved. Stuff. It's just a walk in the country, isn't it? Could be dark in there. A bit of texture in here. Just use a bit of a bit of weak sienna in there, just. Oh, 
comfy tote. We'll just text it. We'll just try and make an interesting landscape of it. Now I've put two, two the same here, so I'm going to have to make one more dominant than the other. So I'll, uh, I'll make this one a bit of a bit heavier. Sort of late afternoon. Okay, I'm not going to put any figures in for this one. It's just an exercise. I'll sign it and we'll have a look at it in the mount, see what we've made of it. So, this is a, more a tutorial in painting, painting countryside with trees. Um, like the mount. Let's take, it, take that off. There we are. So let's move the camera over to the more central behind there. It's just a very simple country scene, a walk in the country, could be anywhere. <coughs> just an ex exercise in painting these. I could have done some more lights and darts in there, but, but I'm, I, I'm reckoning that that is quite late in the afternoon and the sun is going down, so the shadows, um, well, at least well, this, this is going to be silhouetted. Um, sometimes we paint with the light behind us, so everything's much brighter. But I like all this dark contrast. Uh, let's go and have a look. Okay, right, let's go to this bit that we've painted first. No, it, it looks realistic, but it's only you saw how quickly it was done. It's just hitting and missing the paper, getting all this light, leave lots of air holes for birds to fly through. And you can have all your solid stuff further down where you've got all your ivy and rhododendrons and all sorts of green stuff as well. Um, and here we've got this late, this, this, this late sun going down behind this tree, making this uh, sort of a silhouette. We're going, oh, you weren't washing me there because I, I was pointing to another bit of the paper. So that's the horizon there. No distant mountains, vistas. Uh, so let's go into that big tree there. Now you can see how I've done that tree. That I just just hinted at. And then this foreground was so quickly done. I reckon that it's better to do your foregrounds as quickly as possible. Get them out of the way. Because the least you put in them, the better. Because when you're looking at the landscape, you're not looking at your feet. So the foreground, for me anyway, is a support for the rest of the picture. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>